What is going on friends, we are back with Malakis playing for Team Spain and his opponent is called Will of Fire playing for Team Italy. Will of Fire has to win this for Team Italy and then it will be 5 and 5 and we will get a tie break and if Malakis wins, Spain moves on to the next round which is a semi-finals of uh, World Cup and yeah we do have enough time to talk about the teams. I do remember recording this yesterday and the team preview went on for like two minutes or something like that. So Wall of Fire his team looks like balance, but then at the end at the end of the team he has Alamomola and Duck Trio, which makes it kinda look like semi-stall to me. <clears throat> it's either gonna be Z move like he has three potential Z move users, the uh, Kogo, the Tornadus and the Duck Trio. <coughs> Greninja is really annoying to like his team, so I'm not sure. Like if proting Greninja with Gunk Shot and Hydro Pump, that specific set would be really annoying for his team. Uh, I could see the Almamola having a jack button to like get the Duck Trio in without having to like predict on a double. Like if you play if you play Duck Trio risky and like try to double it in, it's like unnecessary risky sometimes. I'm thinking that's a Solvest turn, but I'm not sure. If the Alamomola is Spadef, that could definitely be his Greninja check. But yeah, let me talk about Malakith's team a bit. I think that's the Scarf Kelio. <clears throat> Bulky Celesteela. Mega Mawile and the Tita is probably Bandit. Uh, Stealth Rocks Lando or Stealth Rocks Mawile? I don't think it will be Rocks Tita. <clears throat> I guess the Rocks Lando is... I just, I'm just not sure if it's offensive Lando yet. Could also be like it could be offensive rocks land or it could be defensive rocks. And like I'm thinking his Tapu Koko is Z move, but I'm not sure. And it's funny how both teams look both teams look really weak to Tapu Koko. Like the Dagi on Will of Fire side it could be Choice Scarf to like get rid of Koko because otherwise Koko just U turns out of you. But just like just look at Malakis team what a Koko does to it. It kills T Bolt versus everything. Um, and if it has HP eyes, it can also hit the Landris, which is like a 2 KO on that. Tita is like, I guess, Tita is like the only somewhat good thing that can take a T-Bolt decently well, other than Lando, which uh, gets popped by HP eyes. And yeah, I guess own Coco is his Coco check. And I guess, um, yeah, non Scarf Kelly can also revenge the opposing Coco, because um, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be Scarf Coco on Will of Fire's side. <clears throat> but yeah, the Caldeo doesn't do much early game, like, or like, from team preview, Caldeo doesn't do much, he has Alamomola and Tapu Fini to check it. So we do see a lead with uh, Malakis Lee with Tapu Koko and he sees the opponent is also super weak to it, I didn't talk about it yet, but T-Bolt basically destroys everything other than Duck Trio. Like, if T-Bolt resists his own Tapu Koko, so we will see if he will um, switch out into his own Tapu Koko. And like even if he's assault with tornadoes, I don't think he's gonna be willing to take this um, T bolt because it's gonna do a lot. <clears throat> if he scarf Dougie, he can go hard into his own Dougie. But I think we'll just throw on his own Tapu Coco. Mega Mowell can looks like a threat somewhat, <clears throat> but if the Dougie is like substitute with Z move or focus sash, it can revenge it. But he does in his own Kapu, Tapu Koko takes 39%. <clears throat> and yeah, <laughs> Koko versus Koko. <laughs> uh, maybe Will of Fire's Koko has Nature's Madness and he's gonna throw Nature's Madness up. A fire one off on the opposing Koko. I can see Malakis just... The thing is if Malakis clicks U-turn and wins the speed tie, the potential speed tie, what is he gonna switch in? So he just... <laughs> yeah, he does go for U-turn, but what would, what would he have done if he won that speed turn? Like, Will of Fire won the, won the speed tie to get the T-Bolt off. Um, I guess Malakis might have U-turned out if he won the speed tie. Probably into Landris, which would have been a bit risky. But he goes into T-Tar, gets off the sand chip damage, 
And if he's bandit, he can potentially pursue trap this. Um, that the problem is, he might not want to do that because then he gets trapped by Duck Geo after. And Bantra can put in some work, especially if the Alamola is more spadef orientated, which it could be. If the Torn is offensive and not AV Torn, Alamola could be like the spadef thing on the T in the pivot. Because mm, I can definitely see life about the move Torn too. No, I'm not still not sure about the set. So what do you even do here for Malakis then? Because you don't want to pursue it because you get... <clears throat> yeah, so he switches out. Still, he, like, Malakis kind of gave his momentum away there. Like, I think he was fearing to get trapped by the Dagi. Because even even if the, like, if the Tapu Kuku just turns on the U-turns on the Tita, if the Dagi is a Sash, it can come in on the Tita every time. And then just kill it with Reversal. Maybe Malakis went into Lannis potentially scouting for like um, Z Wild Charge, which might have been able to kill the Tita from Max Attack Coco. Not sure about that. Uh, I should run the Kalk. But yeah, this game happened yesterday, so I'm not gonna be able to Kalk when I watch this um, old this recording from yesterday and narrate over it. But I, I didn't see the game live. Like I don't really remember what was going on. It's basically like it's live for you guys. You know. I've done this a few times, like... Yeah, Tabu Fini comes out and... Is he either gonna Nature's Madness or if he has Scald, he can go for that. He has Surf, okay. That did absolutely nothing, so that's probably Max Bedev, Celeste Dealer. So if he predicts the Leech, he can go for a Taunt, but... He doesn't really lose much from just going hard into Heatran. The best thing the Celeste players can do is lead seed, and Malakis might be tempted to heavy slam predicting a taunt, so he w might not lead seed. And it's not like Malakis has like something like Duck Trio on the other side, so the Heatran doesn't have to fear much. Um, okay, the one thing it might have to fear is Earthquake. Celeste still knows Earthquake, but that's not really common at all. Usually they just want to protect lead seed, heavy slam, flamethrower set. As he predicts, uh, he doubles into Coco. I don't know if he predicted the Heatran, but that's the Nature's Madness. So he just wanted to get some chip on the Will of Fire. Just wanted to get some chip on the Celestealer. I had to look his name up in the his name up in the forum because he's playing on some old Universe Nine Survivor or something. So I was like, <laughs> what? Who is this guy? But yeah, it says Will of Fire is his forum is his name on Smogon. So Malakis Coco is really low. Mm, which is annoying, Coco does a lot to his team. We talked about this. <laughs> if, if he's fearing Scarf, Coco is gonna U turn, but I think he might still just click T Bolt. He goes for Z move. Is it Z Wild Charge? Oh, it's Twinkle Tackle. So, what did he predict there? That was weird. That did absolutely nothing. So, that was Z Dazzling Gleam, I assume, that bounced off the Heatran. I know that. The Italian player looks like an absolute god, he will of fire. I'm thinking that this trend is either Spadef and he was able to take two Thunderbolts, or he was confident that Malakis would not go for Thunderbolt. Yes, he might Thunderbolt wouldn't have two it killed, but would have almost two it killed. Like you guys can see did 48. So the twinkle tackle did 13. It might have been rolled if he would have to KO'd, he probably could have lived too. So he goes for Magnus Storm, so I assume this is just max HP Tren. Is it max HP? I think it is. Might also be super offensive. It's either max HP, max speed, or max speed, max special attack. But the t didn't do that much. Like, I know Coco is not that strong, but it was still electric turn boosted. And he did get the play correct of um, just going... He just went for Magnus Storm and killed the Coco. Like, if he went for Rocks... And the Thunderbolt is a roll to tweet KO the Heatran, I guess that would have been unnecessary risky. But I'm thinking I'm thinking he also went for Magma Stone, potentially predicting a taunt. So we know this was a uh, twinkle tackle coco. So the land is probably gonna be defensive with rocks. So now that it's off the table that it's uh, like we know now that it can't be Zemo Landris. What was I talking about? Yeah, I think the duck tree in the back um Made it so Malakis didn't want to go for T Bolt. And also, he, the opposing Duck Trio that resists Thunderbolt would have probably died to the Twinkle Tackle. I'm still not 100% sure if I would have gone for Twinkle Tackle that specific turn. Like, what is there specifically that you predict? Maybe he doesn't have U turn? I'm not sure. 
So he goes on the landers and he's either gonna go for earthquake predicting the Italian player to stay in or he's I think he's just gonna go for rocks. And what Willow Fire can do here is either go out into his one of his Pokemons, Alomola or Tapufini. If he has HPIs, he can potentially go out into Tornadoes as Malakas does disconnect. <laughs> But I'm pretty sure he's coming back like in a few seconds. I do remember watching this part of the game. I just don't remember what happened in the turns. Because I was like, I don't know how long was I awake? I was like 20 out, uh, 28 hours up yesterday to record uh, like a lot of games for you guys. Oh yeah, he's back. I think he just goes for rocks. That's what I would do. He goes for U-turn, um, which is to keep up momentum. So now he can get in his Mega Mawile. Because everything else gets kind of walled by this. I mean, yeah, his Tita can also get a fire off a hit, but that's a duck tree in the back. That's why he didn't want to go to Tita. So I guess Malik has said, if I go for rocks, the Fini is just going to defog, so we're just going to be there, and the deck is just a wasted turn. I don't really gain much from doing that. But the thing is, you can go for rocks, and you can Earthquake and weaken the Fini down. But yeah, by you turning on the Fini, you get the Mawile, and you can go for Thunder Punch, because no one goes hard. No one goes hard duck trio. The only play I can see um, him making is going into Almamola if you see Jack Button. To trap it the Mora with the Duggy. But no human being goes hard in the duck tree. That's no that's not a play, like no one does that. So just as nature's madness get a half on the Mora. Steep punch does like a huge chunk. The thing is he might just be willing to um he might be willing to sack his type of Fini to trap the Mora afterwards with a duck tree, but the problem with that the problem that I see with that is he loses his defogger then. The thing is Tapofini is not gonna be defogging um, that often anyway, like even if he keeps it he just gets serve damage off and he dies to the Thunder Punch and now we're gonna see the Duck Trio switch or the Tapu Coco. Like he has some options. He has a lot of options here actually. Like Tapu Coco resists Sucker Punch, that's why I said that. Heatran can also live Sucker Punch, but I think health on Heatran is more important, so yeah, he goes in the Coco. And he's probably just gonna click Thunderbolt, because it's not worth to click HPIs, and they'll have the Mawile live on like a low roll on something. Like, I could see HPIs actually killing the Mawile, because it has not the best with death, or not the best HP. I know it gets its, um, bulk, its, boot, uh, its bulk gets increased after Mega Evolving, but it's still not like super bulky. I mean, I would rather the Kalk if, like, I don't know his Coco set, maybe he's like some... What's that thing that called that boosts your special attack by 10% as like an item? Is it Wildlands? I don't know, like, for, nah, it's probably called different. There's some weird item that boosts... M maybe with that item, HPS has a higher chance to kill. <laughs> but I would just go for T-Bolt here. Assuming this is just a... He goes hard on the Tita. On the... H wow, he went, actually went for HPS, so it, probably HPS killed then and I just... Didn't know that off the top of my head. Like in my head, calc, I would have thought it was like that it would do like um, maybe six or seven to ten percent. So I thought it was a roll, and I wouldn't have risked that. But the team either he just probably typed in, like he knows how bulky the mobile is, or how at least he somewhat knows how bulky the mobile is from the surf damage that his type of thing he did. So he probably calced that, and then he probably calced that with HPIs and knew he was it was in his favor or it was like guaranteed to kill. So that was really, Malekith looks like the absolute god now, but the problem is, he does get trapped by the Duggy now, as he does go for Bandit Crunch, I assume that's Bandit. Um, the Peril didn't matter because he did not get fully paralyzed, and Duck Tree outspeeds this anyway, and it was put in, uh, it was put into range from Earthquake after the Thunderbolt. So like, Malekith didn't lose anything, even if the Tapu Koko went for T-Bolt, Tita would have been able to live too. But he did lose his type of Coco in the process. It's kind of hard to say if he could have played it different because that's just what Duck Trio does. If you get rid of a Mon that's annoying to your team, like Coco was really annoying to Malakis, he kind of had to get rid of, it. had to get rid of it. But if you do that, if you like get rid of a Mon that's annoying to your team with a Tita, then Ducky can come in and trap you. So he gets up the rocks and I assume he knocks off. Oh, I was about to say a helmet or lefties, and he knocks off lefties. So this is probably uh, more fist death landers, which makes a lot of sense actually, because his team has no other thousand arrows switch in. Like he definitely needs lefties on his landers to stay somewhat healthy. I don't know why I thought it was offensive at team preview. Like there's no way it can be offensive. 
Like, that just makes no sense. Like, that just invites Saiga to click Thousand Arrows and destroy you. But yeah, he did get up the rocks um, on the incoming tornadoes, because Dagi can't really do anything to Landris. The best thing Dagi can do is, like, toxic a Landris. And he did predict... I don't know if he predicted a knockoff or just a hurricane. and he was pretty confident that he could live a hit and he just wanted a slow U-turn. Because this Landris, he doesn't need it healthy for that much. It's still out of range from the Magma Storm from the Heatran. Yeah, it obviously would have potentially been in Magma Storm range if it took a hurricane slash HPI. I think it can take hurricane plus Magma Storm potentially, but HPI obviously would have done a lot. And like on Alamola, you're not going to be staying in with Landris, so you don't need the healthy for that. And it's not like Alamola does even do that much with Scald. But yeah, it's pretty obvious that this Landris is just you turn off quick rocks, HP Ice probably. It's not like it's SD or some breaker that will that's going to be staying in on Alamola. So he goes in the self Stealer. So we're going to see either the knockoff from the Tornadoes or the Heat Wave coming. And it's either it's either between Leech Seed and a Heavy Slam for Malakith here. I think he will Heavy Slam first. Because if he... Um, if Will of Fire wants to knock off his leftovers, he will have to lose a lot of health on his tornadoes in the process. So if I'm uh, Malakith, I would predict the turn to stay and go for Heavy Slam. And the turn after, I would predict the Heatran go for Leech Sheet, I guess. Yeah. I mean, that's just how I would play it. And we'll see how they play it. So this is gonna... He keeps this going, man. So yeah, if I recall correctly, Malakith is actually the captain of Team Spain and I don't think he has played any games in Round 1 of World Cup. Does he need this Tornado as healthy, by the way? It's nice for the Kels, but we already know that he also has Alomola on the back. But he decides to U-turn, so he's probably gonna go Heatran. Or goes Alomola, okay. And that's the hard heavy slam. See, I would have made the same play. So this works out for Will of Fire, aka Universe 9 Survivor, or what a uh, funny account name. So this Alamola is gonna be Wish Protect, and then it's Toxic and Knockoff or Tox uh, or Knockoff and s or Knockoff slash Scald. Like I'm not sure about the last move slot. Um, he has a Tabo Fini, so it might not be Scald. Cause Tabo Fini in Misty Terrain, you can't really get burned. I mean, I know that I just mentioned Toxic, but you can still run Toxic because Misty Terrain isn't always up. And also some Pokemon in the air, you can poison them. Or especially stuff like Tapu Koko that switches into you potentially. You can Toxic that because the terrain will change. Oh my lord, Malakith with a gold play. Knowing that, yeah, he was... Uh, that, that play makes a lot of sense though. Because it was pretty obvious that he had a wish in the air and he wanted to get his Heatran back healthy. Like, Heatran was like the Pokemon that was... That has taken the most damage. So if I think about it, it was pretty obvious that he was going Heatran there, but still a nice play for Malakus side. And yeah, if I'm Malakus here, you want to keep up momentum and U-turn out probably, but if you get the play wrong and the Heatran stays in on your U-turn, it's gonna be bad. He does just go Alamomola and we do see the U-turn there. I would have made the exact same place. Like if I was Will of Fire, I would have not risked my Heatran. And if I was Malakus, I was like, I need this momentum, let me U-turn again. I'm not letting you Alamomola wish protect and be annoying. <clears throat> so I guess Mega Mawile and I guess he might just go for play rough. Nah, there's no way that with Rocks up, especially if he was Sash Duggy. No one goes hard Duggy here, so I don't think he has to play rough. I guess Thunder Punch is fine. Thunder Punch also does more the heat turn. I think he can th Oh he might be focus punch, yeah. That's an option that, that I sometimes forget. I just thought about this. So yeah, if you have Focus Bench, you can click that brick in the heat run. The thing is, the if the Alamola lifts a hit... Yeah, so Malakis might think this Alamola doesn't have Scald, which is why he made the play. Because if the Alamola doesn't have Scald, it cannot touch the Mauler, because... Uh, knock off Toxic, which protects, so it can't do anything, so the Mauler could SD up on this. I think Malakis predicted the Alamola to not have Scald, because if Alamola has Scald... Pretty sure it lifts any hit from the range it's at. And it could kill the Mauler. And there is the Focus Punch, and we do see he switches out hard into Duck Trio, predicting a Thunder Punch, and he gets bopped by Focus Punch, so Malik is looking like an absolute god. I think he predicted the Heatran, I don't know, 
he, I mean, he created some sort of switch, obviously. That was not Tornadoes, either Heatran or Dougie. Not sure if he was thinking about Dougie, though. I think he was more also predicting the Heatran, because the Heatran could um, live a Thunder Punch. Yeah, it could live a Thunder Punch. It could also live a plus two Sucker Punch. Yeah, Mazar said in this chat, why did he not Scald? I think he just didn't have Scald. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it doesn't have Scald. It's, they're all saying, why did he not Scald? Or, yeah, Ray Scarface said it's probably Scald. This is what I'm thinking the entire time. It's the main reason why you would even bring the Morwell out on the Alamola, I'm thinking. But yeah, you can just go for Heat Wave here. It does good damage to basically everything other than the Kaldeo. And what is Kaldeo doing to a Tornado? That is potentially a Salt Vest. Like, it's probably Scarf Kaldeo, and it's not going to be doing much to Torn. It, it doesn't want to switch in because it dies to Heat Wave into Hurricane. So like, <laughs> Kelly is always no no tornadoes counter, and everything else. I guess he might just go for sucker punch. Um, no, the the thing is, Malakas kind of wants to keep this more well because if the Almola really can't touch it and only has toxic knockoff push protect, he can get up an SD or like a thunder punch, a huge thunder punch later on in the game on the Almola or in the incoming heat run then. So he might go into Cell Stealer here because Heatwave it doesn't do that much. It does like I assume 30%, that's my head calc. Cause Cell Stealer can still get leftovers back and there's no way that Will of Fire goes for knockoff in the face of a Mega Mawa. That one is just too scary to his team. Like he's probably fine with just getting the chip damage off on the Mawa. Uh, on the Cell Stealer is what I meant. <laughs> Maybe he Malikis can also potentially sack his Landris, but I don't think he's gonna do that. Like Landris might lift a combination of Heatwave and a Hurricane. How else? I think it was healthy, right? It was at 80 something. Or I forgot, but it was pretty healthy. I think it only got took a knockoff from the Torn early in the game. Cause he already got up the rocks. Like the main thing he needs the Landris for is like probably for t for hitting the Heatwave. He does just hard knockoff. That was a risky play, but. I said there was no way he was knocking off because Mega Mola is a threat, but if you think about it, he's in the back, it's a World Cup game, he has to win for his team, otherwise his team Italy is out. And also, yeah, he had to make some play, I guess. It worked out for him, I can't say, like... Like, I understand why he made the play, but like, that's, if you think about it for a while, that's scary because knocking off a Mega Mola, that is a threat to your team. But, I just said it in the same sentence, right? It's a threat to your team, so you know that Malakis is probably gonna save it. I just thought Heatwave was a fine mid-ground play to get some chip off. But yeah, Almola is probably gonna wish up here. As I think he doubled on the Heatran potentially picked in the Mawile, but he, he double leech seed, which was a really good play for Malakis. Yeah, I think Malakis knew that his opponent knows that the um, Mawile was the Almola, so his opponent predicted the Mawile and doubled onto Heatran. And Malakis makes a great play but doesn't get rewarded, leech seed misses, that sucks. This would have been some chip damage on the Heatran. We will see if this comes into play later. I hope this will not change the outcome of the game. The rocks go up now and Kelly is just gonna be clicking Scald and try to burn the Almola, I guess. Yeah, the rocks are huge though. Cause Mola was at 8%, now Mola only has like one more switch in. He does not have any hazard control, so the rocks are there to stay. He does not get the Scald burn in the aloe. So it's looking like Will of Fire can bring this back for Team Italy. You can probably just go for Scald with Alamomola. Oh no, he doesn't have Scald, right? We were talking about this earlier. Like, just the way his Alamomola has been played. If it has knockoff, he can click knockoff, right? But I assume he might just click Wish again with the Alamomola. It's a safe play. And he can then react to what Malakis does. He does just try to Scald burn the Alamomola. He gets it. That's the uh, Toxic Yeah, see? I think he might. I thought he would not toxic because um, it doesn't hurt the Morwell and doesn't hit the Celestia. Dealer. But he was probably not going into a 2% uh, Morwell. Like 2% Morwell might even die to knock off. Even though Mo like Alumola is like kind of weak and it's like just a knockoff that is resisted and like he has the item. So like it does like less damage because of Morwell having an item, but still it might, it might be able to do 2%. So the Keldia is basically on a timer now, which means. It looks like Heatran can win this game for Willow Fire. Um, if he gets rid of the. Oh, we do see the last move is Ice Beam. Oh my god. Okay, I would have not thought about that. So it's Toxic Ice Beam, Wish Protect, I assume. That is not a set, dude. What are you. Whew. So that is for um, 
probably for substitute Zygarde so that it doesn't set up a sub on his on his Alamomola. That's really interesting. I, that did not cross my mind at all. The ultimate Zygarde card. <laughs> love smoke this chat. Love. Oh my lord, he goes hard shred on the flamethrower. What was? What did he flamethrower there? Flamethrower doesn't do anything to Alamomola and the Torn, if you predict a Torn, you probably go for Heavy Slam. I'm not really sure what Malakir's predicted that specific turn. And he does sub up. And Kelly has to take a round of Rocks, Poison, and it has to take another round. And he has to take an Earth Power slash Magma Storm here. Earth Power, yep. Puts the Kelly be at... Gets the Spadef Drop, puts the Kelly below 50. Puts it to 39, actually, with the Poison. And he's just gonna go back into Almola, and Malakir can't really do anything. And he does disconnect again. Oh my lord. Ah. But yeah, if Will of Fire wins this for his team, like I said, it's gonna be 5-5 five and five and we're gonna get a tiebreaker where it's gonna be three games. I think both team, each team decides one decides one tier that they're gonna play, or one generation is what I meant to say. Um, I can talk a bit be in the time that he is disconnected. I will talk a bit about the tiebreaker, never mind, never mind. I'll talk about after the game. He sacks off his more while. I mean, he didn't sack it off, he doubled it in on the, he doubled it in on the album Mola, but... Ice Beam is going to be able to do 2% easily. So he does kill it with the Ice Beam, I assume. Yup. The Thunder Punch did a good chunk, but yeah. Alamola would, like, it has a huge HP stat. Alamola's defense and Spadef is not even that good. I think the defense is decent, the Spadef is like, eh. But the HP is so good that, like, it can eat up hits pretty well. Especially physical hits. But yeah, Morwell, if the rocks weren't up, it could have put in some more work. So he doubled in the Morwell, yeah, he was obviously not... I was about to say, like, he was not sacking the Morwell, the trend was not staying in on the Kelty, that was the obvious, the most obvious Alamomola of all time. But yeah, Malakis is probably just gonna be clicking off quick here. No point in protecting, as, like, um, the burn damage will just cancel out the leftovers. Um, this might not even kill the Alamomola. Like the off might just do 25 or something like that. I know Lannis has like 145 attack, but it's probably not invested. I don't know why you protect ever there. Like why? It doesn't do anything. You just get lefties and then you lose lefties thanks to burn. Go with it in the tornadoes. I guess to scout if he wants to off quick or if he wants to U-turn. <laughs> Someone posted a call Jimmy Tordvig. That ice beam from Alamomola does like 37 to 44 to Zygarde if the Zygarde has no HP or no, no def the death investment, which is funny. He keeps disconnecting. So he got in his tornadoes and I assume he's just... Just gonna spam uh, either Hurricane or Heat Wave. Like, he already knocked off the, the um, Celestial if I recall correctly. So, and this, like everything, there's no Pokemon to knock off. You either Hurricane if you just want damage in general overall, or if you predict the Celesteela, you Heat Wave. He goes for a Z move. Ooh. Supersonic Sky Strike, and it does a clean 25. It bounces off the Celesteela. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that was some nice baby damage. But yeah, Celesteela not having leftover, so every chip damage matters. Um, he's gonna go for the Leech Seed because it hits everything and he wants health back. He's probably gonna try to pivot from Alamomola into Heatran. The thing is he doesn't have to, he can also just wish. He can just wish here. I don't think that Celestia can do anything to this. Like Earth Slash would do damage, but they don't really pack that and probably won't even kill. So you either wish here or you go hard in the Heatran. Yeah, I think the Duck Trio got sacked off earlier, so I wasn't sure which one was the Z move one. It got bobbed earlier by Focus Punch. I was thinking Dougie or the... Like, I wasn't sure if the Dougie was the Z-Move one, because we didn't see the Dougie use it, obviously. But yeah, now we know the Z-Move one is a torn as he makes... Malchus keeps making nice plays, he has to, he's in the back. Like, at one point his opponent was in the back and made a really nice knockoff on this on, on the Mega Maw while... And the in, knocking off a Mega Maw while on the incoming Cell Stealer. But he goes in the torn predicting Earthquake, did he? He just Earthquake, okay. Hurricane does connect, no confusion, and it's HPS, it's gonna bounce off the Torn. And the Torn can just click 
I don't know if knockoff kills, but I guess Heatwave would definitely kill. Not sure if he has a 100 accurate move that can kill. Knockoff should do 4%, right? Even if the Lando has no item at the moment. Yeah, it should do 4%. Like, come on. Yeah, pretty sure it's knockoff kills. Anyway, I will talk about the tiebreaker afterwards. I really don't want to miss anything. U turn even kills. Wow. That is surprising. I will talk about the tiebreaker for um, the Germany versus US East. For the matchups, and uh, the deadline for that is on um, Wednesday, by the way. So. I hope I can record those games. I know I'm not gonna be recording the GSC game probably, but the Elite Seed is on the wish. And he's probably just gonna go on a heat run here, right? And even if Malekith dies into Kalio, it doesn't matter at this point. I think Malekith loses this. Because. Yeah, double Elite Seed's nice play. Yeah, doubling into Kalio doesn't do anything because you just take rocks, poison, and you get put down low, and then he just goes into Torn or Allo, and you get. You die to toxic eventually. So back into Element Mola we go. On a predictor protect, which makes sense. Wish up. We throw a wish up in the air here if we were through the Will of Fire. And yeah, it's looking really good for him. So if he wins, there's a tiebreaker between Spain and Italy as well. He's just gonna go back to Heatrun, I guess. Like, Malakith is gonna get PP stalled eventually. I don't think there's a point in uh, playing this out. Lichi just doesn't do enough damage. With Almola having Wish and keeping the entire team healthy, cancelling out Rock's damage, etc., it's just. Like, Lichi only has 16 PP and they already used a few. I don't know, he probably has like 7 left, I don't know. Yeah, this, this game is over. We're gonna see tiebreak. I don't see how Malakith can bring it back for Spain. I think Spain was up 5-3 earlier and now it's 5-5, right, if Malakis loses. Yeah, he did forfeit, he, did, he um, realized there's no point and... There's gonna be tiebreaker between Team Italy and Team Spain, it ended 5-5 five and five, and the same for US East and Germany, which was really disappointing for me, Germany was up 4-1 at one point. And afterwards, at one point, Germany was up 5-3 and three even. But then PDC played really well, brought it back to 5-4, and what was the other game? There was an ADV game, I think, where, um, I think there was also some hacks for US East, but I'm not going to talk about hacks. Germany also hacks in some games, still. I don't think the hacks was, like, game deciding in most of the Germany games, but I mean, it's Pokemon, it happens. But yeah, I'll go to um, pause the recording real quick, and I'll see you in a, sm in a Smogon forum. With the uh, playoffs, uh, with the tiebreaker matchups, is what I meant to say. So we are here on the Smogon forums, and you guys can see they finished five and five. You can see every, every game. I did miss, yeah, I did miss Snow vs. Trolls go live, but I kept, I put the replay for that game in an earlier recording of mine where I mentioned that I missed some games. I also missed the Spectre Reader Raikou game. And yeah, I think I, you guys know that. These lower gens, uh, all the gens, I don't really focus on them. I, I would have recorded Asuya was Soul, but I think I also missed that one. I was uh, busy at that time they played. But yeah, so the matchups for the tiebreak are going to be Bro Kappa versus Axel 10. So it's going to be a rematch. I think Bro Kappa won pretty convincingly. In the, yeah, yeah, here they played, so they, they will play again. But it was also a tough matchup for Axel 10, so we will see how it turned, how that will turn out. I'm pretty sure that. It's gonna be definitely an interesting game, obviously. And Snow vs. Poik, I'm looking forward to this a lot. I think Snow is 4-0 at the moment, Poik is 2-2, two two, but Poik is like really good. Like, I think in a pressure situation when it comes down to it, Poik can definitely put it out for Team Spain. And Alexander vs. Raikou is also a pretty hyped matchup. Um, Alex going 3-0 first round, and I think he lost vs. Poik, and yeah. And this is quarterfinals. Um, I'm not going to criticize his plays, um, I think he could have played a bit better though, but what I meant to say is now he's in Auras and he won OT, so like, when it was Auras OU, like, two years ago, so he's definitely good in Auras, like, I mean, obviously, all of these plays are good, like, 
there's no doubt in my mind the team that makes it to the next round of World Cup will have some good players, right? But yeah, it's gonna be hype to see Alex versus Reiku. Reiku has been playing pretty well. He won versus Spectre. We don't use some Bengay team. I think he had also a good matchup. But yeah, I will also be. Uh, let me show you guys the matchups for Germany and US East. US East Germany here. It's gonna be John versus Mazar. John aka Brofus versus Mazar. Last time it was ABR versus Mazar when um, Mazar won. Um, I don't know Mazar, like, I remember him saying yesterday, let's play, let's play, I wanna play. And then ABR was like, do you not prep? And <laughs> that was funny. I think they, yeah, Germany already prepped enough, is what they like, said, they wanted to play immediately. ABR was, was get this money. It's gonna be interesting to see ABR and Auras. The last time I've seen him play Auras was, was Nintendo in Smoke Tours. Like, other than that, I haven't seen ABR play much Auras lately. And PKC was Badge for GSC. I don't know anything about GSC, so I really hope that they will not play this game last. I hope they play like, let's say they play this or this game first and then they play this game. And if it comes down to a third game, like I really just hope that they either just play these two games in a row and everyone record, record both. If, it, if one team wins 2-0, and oh, or if it comes down to a third game, I just hope that it's not gonna be the GC game that it comes down to because I would really love to bring you guys live the game that decides this series or just this series in general besides the GC game because I have like no knowledge and like I'm not also not interested in that tier it, it's not probably not that bad if you get into it but I'm not really gonna get into it and yeah I'm pretty sure there's like other poker tubers if you wanna watch all the gens but like yeah so I'll go over the entire thing here. World Cup Round 2, aka okay, quarterfinals. Um, I already co said congrats to uh, Europe in an earlier video. I I'm gonna say congrats again. They won 8 and 2 versus Latin America, which was pretty surprising for me that they won that high. There was also some hacks, I think, but still, they were. Like, if you won 8 and 2, like, it's pretty obvious that you're like a gold team. Like, they're doing pretty well. I think they could even. They even subbed out Ricardo. Ricardo's also pretty good. And yeah, we got US West, they won versus France. Ajama didn't even play because this game didn't matter and he, I don't think he wanted to play. So yeah, these two, Congress to Europe and US West, those two teams made it to the next round, which is uh, semi-finals. And then we have this tie record between Italy and Spain and US East and Germany that decides the last two teams for semi-finals. And I guess you guys know this by now, I hope Germany can make it. And yeah, shout out to my man Dennis the Menace. I know he's like sweating out too because like he wants Team Italy to go uh, to the next round. Um, I don't really mind who wins this, but like, ah, uh, man, I like that both players have both teams have players that I like or like somewhat know, so it's like tough. I just want really cool games, please, no hacks. And yeah, hope you guys all enjoy it. And yeah, like that was also well done by Italy because I think they were down five and three, like I said, and they brought it to a five five. Or at one point they were also down four and two. And yeah, I'll see you guys with more World Cup coverage. I also do like a shot on live, just not today, maybe like tomorrow or something, or like in two days. Uh, probably not. Nah, probably not. I'll probably focus on World Cup. But if there's like no World Cup tomorrow, we'll see. Um, I think Pog is playing tomorrow. Not sure if there's any other World Cup. Uh, yeah, other than that, I wish you guys a fantastic day. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you later, Dockridge. Signing out. Peace.